Welcome to part 2 of the TV repair series. Now, I'm currently cleaning up a few things in here since uh, working on this thing is uh, kind of disgusting since the previous owners were smokers, everything is a bit sticky and dirty and if you just touch some random surface like this, mm, yeah, this is not nice. Uh, you, you just get all that dirt and dust and whatnot on your hands. I've cleaned it up so far as good as I can so it's not like you end up with black hands every time you touch something. For example, the knobs on here, I've just put those into an ultrasonic cleaner and those ridges on here, those were looking very disgusting and damn, the ultrasonic cleaner has done a perfect job at this. But yeah, that aside, uh, the issue in this video is this potentiometer here. Now this is the potentiometer to adjust the picture. And uh, like I've mentioned before in my previous video, this is an old potentiometer from the 60s, maybe early 50s, maybe late 50s, who knows, maybe it has a date code on it, so we could check that. But yeah, the issue here is they put grease into this thing. Now, this grease, after 60 years, essentially has solidified, making it impossible to essentially turn this damn potentiometer. So yeah, the only way you can fix that is either put in a new potentiometer, which I don't really feel like doing, or taking out the potentiometer, disassembling it, removing all the grease with some isopropanol or contact cleaner, and re-lubricating it. I'm just going to use WD-40. It's gonna work just fine. There we go. And damn, that is a monster of a potentiometer. At least they were nice enough to extend the cables a bit. So working with this thing is going to be a lot easier. And there we go, this is a 50k potentiometer. Sure, you could just put in a new one if you really wanted to, but eh, why not just fix it? Now the way this thing is constructed, we have four clips and we can just take a very small sharp screwdriver, lever that underneath here, and just undo all those clips. And with the clips undone, we can just disassemble the potentiometer like so. And there you go. Just look at how huge everything is here. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And uh, yeah. Now this section you could lubricate with some Vaseline if you really wanted to. But yeah, I'm just going to clean it up with a Q-tip and some contact cleaner. Just to make sure we don't get too much dust and dirt on there, and if there's anything dirty on here, it's gonna be removed. And here's our real issue. As you can see, there is absolutely no way to turn this thing. Nothing happens. There's a tiny clip on here you have to undo. Now if you undo that clip, be kind of careful, because uh, if you do that uh, kind of wrong, this thing is just going to fly everywhere and you are probably not going to find it again anymore and that would really, really suck. Now make sure you put it somewhere where you don't lose it, preferably on a white surface. Now we can flip this thing over, press down on it and it does not come out. Great. Well, it is moving, but yeah, probably have to do a jump cut because this thing is so, so damn seized up and stuck. Well, it is definitely loosening up, but damn, it is super, super seized. It takes so much force just to turn this thing, that is absolutely ridiculous. No wonder why it will not come apart. Finally! I'm just going to use some contact cleaner since that can dissolve the old grease. Make sure you really, really clean up inside the thing since that's where all the old grease is and you just want to get rid of as much of that as you can.
And there we go, that should take care of that at least. Now we have to do pretty much the exact same thing with the rod as well, since uh, you can actually see the grease. If we can get a closer look at that. You can actually see the grease all on there and it's really nasty. So yeah, just see some contact cleaner or isopropanol. And there we go, that should be pretty much all of this thing cleaned up. Just make sure by touching it that there's nothing sticky left. And we can reassemble the whole thing again. It's probably best to apply the WD-40 now. And, as you can see, the whole thing rotates super, super easy. Just make sure those things don't come out. So it's probably best to put the clip back on. Make sure that's nice and secure. And everything still rotates nicely. That is perfect. So, just gonna clean up the outside a little bit since it did get a bit too well uh, greased. So now I have to figure out how to put this thing back together. Now comes the fun part of putting this thing back together. And as you can see, the potentiometer can only turn so much. And in this case, we have it in the center position now. So we have to get this side facing down. That means our logo is going to face to the bottom side of a potentiometer, or in this case, upwards. Since the whole thing is spring loaded, whoops, that's the wrong way around. Since the whole thing is spring loaded, that's a bit tricky to do. And then we just have to push those clips back and clamp them in place. Alright, and there we go, our potentiometer, as you can see, has been fixed. We can turn the knob as much as we want and as easy as we want. So, yeah, essentially, that's it. All we have to do now is, essentially, put it back into the device. I have to figure out which way it was in there. The way I'm guessing it was like that. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, now we can put one of our knobs on there. I have to insert the, well, two screws without probably making a mess. And the way this thing gets mounted as well, we have a slightly flat section on the knob here as well, and the shaft. 
So one screw needs to be on there. So we can just do that. Sorry about the stupid angle. And now we can tighten up the other one. And there we go. As you can see, we can now easily turn this knob without any issues whatsoever. So that's one of the kind of important things on this TV fixed, since uh, yeah, without it we couldn't adjust the picture. Hmm. So yeah, that was a part two, fixing a stuck or seized potentiometer. And we will probably continue next time with all the fancy capacitors. And uh, yeah, there is a lot of them. And I still have to figure out which ones I actually need to replace. Well, the main ones are obvious, the tower capacitors, the wax paper ones, and uh, yeah. But I'll go into more detail in the next video about that. So yeah, thank you for watching this part of the video, and goodbye.